My name is Jamie Davis. I'm a training coordinator for business and financial services. <laughs> I want to say thank you everybody for coming. And I thank you, Lori, for being my stand-in. You uh, <laughs> did a great job as my stunt double. Twins. Um, and I want to I wanna quickly um, recognize the graduates. If you could stand up so we can give you a quick round of applause. <laughs> but we have, we have four different departments now, and when we started it was kind of um, uh, a different organization when we started. So, so now we have four different departments. We have facility services, uh, business and financial services, PMCS, and technology resources. So uh, we have representatives from, from all of those departments as part of our graduation today. And um, I'm going to give a couple quick stats, I guess, for the program. This is our first year for the program. Deborah, I'm going to give a shout out to Deborah. She's done an amazing job. <laughs> she led the, the group through the whole year. And Bob Lewis, one of our trainers, is back there. And we had uh, 40 applicants the first, first round, so I thought that was pretty good for a program that people didn't really know a lot about. Um, so we had 40 people apply for the for the program to begin with. It's a it's a pretty intensive program, so we had to be kind of selective on on who made it in because there's a lot of time commitment. Um, so we had 16 people that we we uh, had go through the program this first year. A couple of them. It, it just didn't work out for, for timing reasons, for stress reasons. You know, not everybody really enjoys getting up and talking in front of people. Uh, I probably fall into that category too, but I might do well. Um, so, so, anyway, thank you and congratulations to all of you guys. And I'm going to let Mike come up and say a few words about <coughs> facility services and his take on the program. And then we'll present the facility services awards and then We'll go to the, we'll go through the program like that. So, Mike. Okay. Thank you, Jamie Davis, formerly of. Facility <laughs> Services. <laughs> and just to make it, just to uh, to make sure it's, it's clear, things are always different, and so are our departments. So. Well, welcome everybody. I want to uh, thank you for being here, and I want to wish the uh, the graduates uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, you know, when we talked about this program some time ago and sat down with Deborah and talked about it and what we might do with it, uh, we kind of had two goals in mind. One was to provide people that were interested in uh, public speaking an opportunity to learn more about public speaking and an opportunity to practice. Uh, and we didn't have many opportunities like that. Yeah, but the other, uh, the other reason for it, which I think is very important too, is to then turn you into ambassadors and send you out, like maybe missionaries is a better word. <laughs> <laughs> and go, because there, there really is, I think, in, in our line of work, in, in all of us, you know, our customers don't see us very often. When they do, it's usually in a negative sense. And we want to be able to tell them the great things that, that everybody's doing because there are great things all over uh, CPFM uh, that are going on. So that's part of what we were looking for in the uh, in the program was to provide you the skills to go out and do that, to be those ambassadors for CPFM out on campus or even within your own department. I mean, there are there are you know when you look at CPFM, uh, we're what uh, 11, 1,200 people, and there's a lot of a lot of uh, lack of knowledge about what we all do and so that's just something you all can do too uh, is go out and talk to other departments within CPFM. Uh, you're the first class, the class of, is this class of 2012 or 13? Which are we calling it? 12. 12. Okay, you're the <laughs> class of 2012 because we had to delay this to 2013 which I apologize for because you know, the world could have ended on December 21st. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it didn't, so we could be here. So, that's good. so that, that's really all, about all I want to say is, is congratulations, you, great work. 
I'm, I'm only, uh, the only thing that saddens me is that I wasn't able to see all the presentations because of my schedule, but I tell you what, the ones I saw were fantastic, and I plan on watching them uh, off of the DVDs uh, as soon as I can. So, congratulations once again. All right. So, so I know you all want, want to memorialize that. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, Michael, have you uh, Okay, what do you want me to do? Um, I'm going to give you this, you get to do okay. So, can, oh, can we I have, have yes? Oh, well, that's right. Valerie? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant, can I really, can I have it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> so, Ambassador <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> wanted to better themselves or their ability in this area, 
really is quite an accomplishment just because of that fact that it's something that most people really don't enjoy doing. Now some of us do, actually I'm one of those. I, I always have kind of liked speaking in public. Um, and I guess it kind of goes back to when I was in high school. Um, I had a very wonderful speech teacher, Mr. Martin Henderson. Uh, he was a fabulous teacher. He would probably get on me right now because I'm supposed to only have um, three by five cards and you couldn't have more than three. And so you had to have very brief and succinct notes. And anyway, um, I remember one time I went up and I had four. And Mr. Henderson ripped it up and he said, go on. And so I'll never, I'll never forget that. But, um, but anyway, I just reflect on that. <laughs> and I went on and I did it. But I guess I just reflect on that because um, it, I think about how much it's meant to my career. My ability and my um, enjoyment, I guess I'll say, of getting out and speaking to people. And um, I hope that you find this skill, because it is a skill, it's a very valuable skill, um, and it can help you in many ways throughout your life, whether it's your career, whether it's in your church, whether it's in some other organization that you're a part of. Um, that's a wonderful skill to have. And uh, I'm so proud of all of you for taking that step and wanting to improve yourself. And um, to that, I just say, Congratulations and uh, best wishes, and I hope, uh, I look forward to talking to many more classes over the years. And, and also I want to thank Deborah. I, um, it's a, you did a wonderful job. I already gave her an on the spot, um, and I thought it was well deserved, and uh, thank you. you're welcome. And to Jamie and, and to Bob back there, you do a wonderful job for us, today. so thank you so much. So. Um, that's all I wanted to share, and, and now we'll, we'll go on with uh, recognizing <laughs> Business and Financial Services staff. <laughs> hasn't come natural to, naturally to me and, and someone that is not naturally comfortable in front of people, I, it's something that I've had to work on is to speak in front of people. The good thing is that I'm actually not going last. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that means that uh, uh, anything that uh, Mike missed or Cindy missed, I might cover and then Bill will have nothing to say. <laughs> but one of the things that happened to me as I was coming in uh, this afternoon is I ran into this uh, very well-dressed gentleman and I didn't recognize him. And, uh, and then I thought, oh, it's Jim. <laughs> and, and so, so one of the things about public speaking is that you also need to dress the part. And I think you guys are doing that. And you all, as I looked at you, and you all look very professional, really kind of uh, representing the organization as we would want it to be represented. And so I, I think, as Cindy said, this is not just uh, something that you do to get in front of people, but I think uh, it's a, a life-improving move for you. Uh, someone actually talked to me at one point in time about making a career-limiting move. And they know who they are. <clears throat> Uh, but this is actually a career building. I think that, that being able to speak in front of people and being able to communicate your ideas are really, really important to be able to get you further, not just in your career, but also in your life. And so, um, thank you, Deborah. Uh, and I also want to uh, kind of look at Don back there while he's still back there and say, we had conversations as part of this process and I think that I enjoyed our conversations. And, and I think that hopefully uh, uh, that we will be able to use these new skills, and I hopefully we will use these new skills, not just for us, but to, to make the organization better. So 
that's yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador Don Duty. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Bill Troop from Project Management Construction Services. Thank you. you know, it isn't always bad to go last because you can fill in the blanks for things that other people left out. And you can comment on things they said. And then if you have anything intelligent you've thought of, you can throw that in. So uh, I'm more in the category of Roy. Uh, I didn't. Uh, ever think that I was going to be comfortable standing in front of groups and talking, but when I was in 10th grade, we had a requirement, now, and I didn't even think of throwing this in until Sydney made her comment, but I, when I was in 10th grade, we had to take uh, half a semester of public speaking and half a semester of health, and we were all looking forward to the health, <laughs> because we all had heard from the people a year ahead of that's a great class, so we had to talk about condoms and all that. <laughs> So, but anyway, the public speaking is something everybody just loathes. Oh, and, and one of the reasons people loathe this is because the professor was really scary looking. His name was Mr. Well, not professor, the teacher was really scary looking. His name was Mr. Schimmel. And he, his face was in the shape of a shoe. And so everybody called him Shoe Face. And he'd sit there with this look in his face. And, and the first thing we heard is we were going to have to give a three minute speech. And with that thought, three minutes, it's like four hours. <laughs> but after the semester, you start to get kind of comfortable with it. And then, so when I was in college, I had an opportunity to take it. I thought, I said, hey, that first class wasn't bad. I'll volunteer for it again. And um, I got a, an A in it. Yeah, an A, which was better than I did in most of my classes in college. <laughs> but I said, you know, so you get more comfortable with it, uh, even though you weren't, you know, kind of thinking you were interested in doing this. And then I went in the, in the Army, and, you know, I had this kind of, talk in front of people sometimes, and then I suddenly found out I was going to be teaching in the Army Engineer School, and going, oh crap, <laughs> that's really not what I had in mind, and I practiced, I practiced in front of a mirror, and I practiced in front of my wife, who was a high school teacher, and she critiqued me, which wasn't fun, critiqued <laughs> 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 by your, your peers in, in this process. But gradually, over a period of time, you start to get more comfortable with this, and, um, and, and you, can, you can kind of do it. And uh, I think it was maybe the day after one of the days of presentations, I stopped over at the electric shop after Steve Giannis-Coley gave his presentation, just to tell me he'd done a really good job. And, and the first thing he told me was, oh, you should have seen our first, my first round. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, <clears throat> We practiced, and you know, eventually we got more comfortable and uh, got better at it. And uh, and that's one credit to all of you folks who signed up for this: is you signed up for something that was not in your comfort zone, and you're going to have to stand in front of people, and you're going to have to uh, talk. And nobody made you do this; uh, you just decided to do it. And and then Steve says to me, um, but, "Well, but I see you get in front of these groups, and, and you're kind of natural." And I said, "I don't know." Natural. Okay. I yes, we do get in front of 120 people and, and give a presentation on the organization. It does take some practice to do that, and I confided in him that before every presentation, still I go to the bathroom four times. Actually, <laughs> 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 I assume my goal is to get to two. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, it, it's uh, it is it is daunting to to do that, it, it, and it requires some you know. Some practice. I mean, how many golfers in there? I I'm not a golfer, but I did take golf lessons once, and I tried to get good, you know, kind of good at it. I I, I do have a record. Nobody's asked, ever asked me to play golf with me twice. <laughs> <laughs> Never the second time. But I got to, I, so I decided to take some golf lessons, and and I asked the um, uh, the golf teacher. I said, What did you What did you I mean, What do I need to do to get uh, good at golf? He says, Well, one thing he says I do. He says, I hit 400 balls on the driving range every day. He said, I mean, you're, you're already good. He says, hey, you've got to practice. You've got to keep doing this. He said, that's not all I do. I practice putting and I practice a short game and all that. But I hit 400 golf balls off the, off the tee every day. 
This is just the same. Okay, to stay good at it and to stay so that you so that you uh, and, and get better at it, you need to practice. You need to continuously do it. Okay, and um, and I actually thought I was you know, pretty comfortable doing it. And not about three months after I was here, I was in a meeting in the main building. I stepped on the elevator, and President Faulkner was in there. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, because he asked me, hey, oh, how's everything going? What, what do you what do you do here? And I'm going. So I said, I got to go and make sure that I'm ready for that. Type of thing, and I did make sure I was ready for it. So the next time I stepped in the elevator with somebody important, I could at least make it to the first floor. <laughs> okay, and I think I mentioned this in my introductory comments in here. Elevator speeches. You need you need to be ready to talk for 30 seconds about something. You should, you should practice that, especially now that you've gotten a feel for what this is all like. And uh, you should you should practice that a little bit. Now we also have video kit in here. The, um, at the, uh, when was it? I guess you showed the video before the presentations. Yes. And one of the people who talked in there was Ryan Thompson from Utilities. And one of the things he said was that uh, uh, it's very important to learn how to uh, speak in front of groups. And he says, I know it here because the people above me in the organization have to do it all the time. My director does it, my associate director does it. And if I aspire to, to uh, go to one of those positions, I, I need to kind of get to the point where I can do that. And it, and it is a good thought. I mean, uh, I've been in situations before where we've talked about what things do your new employees, what are they not able to do when they're either coming out of college or coming out of a journey program or whatever. And there's a lot of things that they don't do well. They've got to learn with you. They've got to learn to speak in front of the group. They've got to learn to run a meeting. Running a meeting isn't something that you're born with either. Okay, You don't just learn it the first time you have to go to a meeting. So it's a, uh, there are these things that are good to be able to do in order to get a job and be able to get promoted in a job. And talking in front of groups is, is one, of those, one of those things. And I'll leave you with one final thought. I ended up going, when I was still in, in the Army, I ended up going to uh, a dedication of a new building one time. And um, I got there. I didn't have a role in it. I was just kind of there because I was involved in the construction of the building. And when I got there, somebody ran up to me and said, oh, the Admiral called. And I wasn't in the Navy, but I worked for an Admiral at the time. The Admiral called, and he's not going to be here, and he wants you to uh, make the remarks, make remarks in his place. And, go, right. <laughs> and then, and then it, one of the other guys walks up to me and said, hey, I heard that you were going to make, this guy was outranked me. He says, I heard you were going to, uh, you were asked to make the remarks. Would you rather have me do it? And I said, well, yeah, honestly, I'm really not prepared to do it. He said, well, I'm not prepared to do it either, he said. But I always keep a couple of index cards in my pocket. And if something like this happens, I take out a pen, and I write a few notes, and in a couple minutes I'm prepared, and then I can, you know, I probably don't even need the card. I could, I, could, I could do it. And I remember that one, you know, and a couple of times I've been in that situation, and uh, somebody, you know, Steve Grail's not going to be there. You need to make the marks on his behalf. And, uh, hey, you know, stay calm, think about it, write down the notes, and, and, and you know, so you can do anything you try to do. And, and you guys tried hard. We only got, those of us who went to the presentations, uh, either some, I didn't get to all of them either. Uh, but the ones I saw were really good. I, I know after you know having exchanges with with folks, um, not not all of them were great in the beginning. But with practice, you get better. And I applaud you all for volunteering to be in that program. I thank Deborah for for the job that you did to uh, to help prepare these people. I had several positive comments from folks on uh, on uh, how much they appreciated what you did. And you're putting the program together for the first time. There was no syllabus on how do we teach this class of Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, you had four. Yeah, but, you were here. Yeah, uh, yeah right. uh, Aziz had a graduate class who did, uh, yes. and Wyatt had a death in the family. So, so we have Steve, do you have to it? Ambassador Steve. Ambassador Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador Scott French.
know that that's technically all of the graduates we have, but Deborah uh, has a couple of special awards she would like to present. So I'm going to turn it over to Deborah. Ooh, they're hidden. <laughs> 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 okay, there we go. Okay. okay, so it was fun. It's been great. Uh, they're all a great bunch of people to work with. It's because of you, ambassadors, that this first program actually was a success. So you should give them a round of applause. Things like your enthusiasm that was contagious, really, even for me, it made it worth coming every time we met. But your devotion to it as well, and your commitment, and like they said, you didn't have to do this. You recognized the importance of the skill, so you wanted to come and spend over eight months honing that skill. So congratulations to you all. You are to be commended. So what we thought would be great, because they spent so much time together and they worked very well together, we thought instead of us and the judges, as a matter of fact, are they here? Jamie, Teresa, Vicki, could you all stand? And there's <laughs> one more. They did a wonderful job of providing feedback, ambassadors, would y'all say? <laughs> <laughs> they were all gracious for your feedback, so thank you for your time. Um, but we thought, as opposed to us deciding who was the most improved, which we would have had that insight, not them, but they could have decided the best presentation. We thought the best people to decide that would be the group themselves. So they all were able to vote. They didn't know they were going to do this, so that's how uh, real this is, I guess you could say. I kind of just sprung it on them at, in our debriefing meeting. And I said, you know what, I would like for y'all to take a piece of paper, and I want you to vote on who you think had the most improved, who, had, who would get the most improved award, and who we should give the best presentation to. So that's how quickly they had to decide, and write it down, pass it to me, and it was almost unanimous that the names they gave me, I couldn't believe it. And I knew they didn't have time to discuss it because I was right there. So, the person who received the most improved award is someone who, I have to say for a while there, I thought this person was going to drop out. <laughs> this person truly had a phobia. We spoke about fear, about public speaking. So it really, it really is admirable that this person chose to come in and conquer a fear that this person has. <laughs> so the person who received the most improved award, if you can join me in standing and really congratulating this person <laughs> on the excellent job that he did, is Scott French. smoldering <laughs> and when I gave my speech of the day it was, uh, it was like a great gig for me I know how to do it and to date pretty darn well actually I may say so and when you finish that song there's that moment of complete silence you're like yeah that was a killer and then the crowd goes nuts <laughs> and you all did that um, and so um, very <laughs> <laughs> Award is someone who admittedly procrastinated some, um, but 
because he knew his subject so well and combined that with all of the knowledge that he acquired from Bob's class throughout the monthly workshops, he got up there and knocked it in through the park, hit a home run. So the person that was voted on for the best presentation award, and again, if you could stand while we congratulate Colin Logan. <laughs> Um, wow, uh, yeah, thank you very much. This is very, this is, I was really, really wasn't expecting this at all. Uh, when I joined up for the class, to be honest, when I first joined up uh, and volunteered for it, I, I knew it was, it was going to be a very positive thing for my resume. You know, I, I do, this is, I'm still new to CPFM in general. I got here in, uh, in November of 2010, uh, although I've been with UT for, um, I guess it'd be my 12th year at UT. Um, I never really had these kind of opportunities when I was on campus, but coming over here, it was, everybody was very, everybody encouraged you to go ahead and volunteer for these things. Uh, you, you get to learn new things, you get to expose yourself to uh, new ideas, and more importantly, you get to meet the people that you work for, and most importantly, serve. And so, when I got in this class, you know, I'd seen Scott, didn't know who he was, I knew Steve from being on campus, but didn't really know, you know who he was. Jim was the same way. Valerie was new. All these other folks are new, and now I know so much more about them. I feel much more comfortable around them. Uh, they know that they can come to me for certain things, uh, and I know I can come to them with certain things, too. And, and it was through watching them that I got my ideas. And um, uh, I just want to say, Deborah, thank you. This has been a very, very wonderful program, and, and I look forward to helping you help others uh, make their way through Absolutely. and improve their speech. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. This well deserved. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I told them all. I said that the advantage of having a program, a pilot program, the second go around you get to use all of you to come back in and help out with the next round. And they all so graciously agreed. So we're looking forward to that. But there's something that they learned throughout the whole class, starting with Bob. Bob literally just went around. Did, did we introduce Bob, by the way? Yes. Early we did. Bob literally just went around the room with every one of them the day before they did that first presentation. Presentation, And what did he tell you all? He said, it's not about you. It's about who? The audience. It's about the audience. But today it is about you. So take it in. Think of it that you're on a journey. A journey and just enjoy it, enjoy the scenery, remember the plan and prepare, uh, and take advantage of it. Looking forward to seeing what you all are going to do with this skill that you've honed. Some of you have had it already, so looking forward to your help and to see what you're going to do. A lot of you have already taken the initiative to go out and speak at different events. Uh, I know some of you spoke at Mike's management retreat, which is really great. Uh, someone assigned up to speak at a brown bag, which is really great. I believe that was Valerie. So continue to do things like that, as was mentioned, that you really do need to use it or you'll lose it. So congratulations again. We also wanted to advertise about the program coming up this year. And if Managers, you know anyone that would be interested, we are accepting applications through the end of this month, actually February 1st. So please uh, turn in the applications. If you don't have one, Jamie sent out an email with the application attached, but we can also get some to you if you need them. And speaking of which, I hope managers that you take advantage of the, these resources that are now made available to you to if you have a team meeting where you would like to have someone come in and speak or if it's a team builder in any case i hope you take advantage of the opportunity to bring them in and let them speak with your employees other than that we have cake and punch in the back as you talk with the graduates and congratulate them thank you all for coming <laughs>